What's up pilots? This is Nick from Part-Time Pilot. We are finally to the last step of our cross-country planning checklist. This is where we calculate how much fuel we think we're going to use. Okay, so let's get right into it. To calculate fuel, you got to do it for each phase of flight. We're going to do this for taxi, use fuel during taxi, climb, cruise and descent. We're going to lump in descent with cruise. Just to be conservative, we're going to say it's the same fuel consumption rate. We're going to calculate it for a reserve. Remember the rules for reserve fuel. If you're flying during the day, you need 30 minutes. If you're flying at night, you need 45 minutes. And then we're going to add in our approach and landing because when you get to an airport, how often do they just send you straight into final? Not that often, especially if it's a busy airport. Usually you got to do a 360. You got to enter the pattern. You got to travel the pattern at least once or half of the pattern. This takes anywhere from 10 to 20 minutes. I like to add in 20 minutes for approach and landing. Okay, so now let's go through how you find fuel for each of these phases of flight. Let's start with taxi. All right, so taxi is pretty easy. You just have to find the value. So for the Piper Cherokee Warrior that I fly, in the POH, it is in the weight and balance section. It mentions that from the time you start the engine and the time you take off that taxi to the runway and for your run-up procedures is going to burn about seven pounds of fuel and because we know that one gallon of aviation fuel is six pounds they're also telling us that on average during taxi you'll burn 1.2 gallons now a lot of pilots just use two gallons for taxi i like to use the 1.2 gallons as my value all right, so that's how you do it for taxi. For climb, we're gonna use a fuel time and distance to climb chart. Now we've already done this once. At the very beginning of our cross country playlist and checklist, we found the distance to climb. And when we did that, we also found the fuel to climb. So if you wrote that down like you're supposed to, you've already calculated the fuel for climb. Now, if you wanna check out that video, just click on the eye that's popping up right now and that'll take you to that video so you can get a good review of how we did that. Now we're gonna review that right now for you, a quick review, all right? Okay, so a quick recap on how we find the fuel for climb. We're gonna use our fuel time and distance to climb chart and we're gonna do it at our takeoff altitude or elevation and then we're gonna do it again at our top of climb elevation, okay? So we find the surface temperature and draw it up to our pressure altitude at our elevation. Draw that line over where it meets our fuel curve. And then we're gonna draw a straight line down and read off a value for fuel. We're gonna do that again at the top of our climb. So we're gonna find the temperature at the top of our climb, draw a straight line up to the altitude we want to climb at, draw a line over where it intersects the fuel curve. We're gonna draw a straight line down and read off that value. We can do that this at each checkpoint during climb. We take the difference between the value we find at the top and the value we found at the start of our climb, we find that difference and that is the fuel burned during that climb. Okay, so now how do we find it for cruise and descent? All right, so for this, we're gonna use this equation. We're gonna use fuel consumed, what we wanna find, equals the fuel consumption rate times time. So we know the time for each of our checkpoints. Now, if we just have a fuel consumption rate that we plan on burning fuel at, we can just use a simple equation to find the fuel concern for e consumed for each checkpoint. We're going to do use the same equation for our reserve fuel and the same equation for our approach and landing. So let's go and check out a cross country plan and do some quick calculations for our cruise and descent. All right. So here I've written in times. This is a just a sample cross country plan. We have our times up here. We got our altitudes, we got our checkpoints. We got our distances we got winds temperatures courses and I haven't filled in the magnetic heading on this one but we got true airspeed ground speed and we have fuel so here you'll see our fuel for taxi we did the calculations for climb these are the climb portions we used our fuel time and distance to climb chart now we're left with our cruise and descent okay so starting at waypoint four we're gonna have a time of 11 minutes now we need a fuel consumption rate to multiply this time by in order to get our fuel consumed. So where do we get this fuel consumption rate? Well, this can be gathered from your performance charts in your POH. For example, best power cruise performance chart. If you look right here in the middle of this chart is a little table that says fuel consumption. 
On the left hand side, you got some percentages. These are percent of max power, the same as you see on these lines right here. And then on the right, you have how much fuel the engine will consume at that engine rate. Okay, so what you can do is you could find the engine power you're going to use at each checkpoint and interpolate and find the exact fuel consumption value or you can find the highest fuel consumption value and just use that because it's more conservative so if you look in that table 75 percent is 10 gallons per hour and that is what i use for my cruise and descent when i fly in the piper cherokee warrior all right so let's use 10 gallons per hour for our fuel consumption rate let's go back to our planner so Okay, so we have 11 minutes times 10 gallons per hour, but we cannot make this calculation until we convert minutes to hours. So let's divide by 60 and we will get 1.8 gallons. All right, so let's do that again for waypoint five. We have 10 divided by 60 to get it into hours times 10 gallons per hour. 1.7 gallons and if we continue to do this all the way through we'll get we'll be able to fill out our entire chart okay so that's how we find our cruise and descent points and now we're left with reserve and approach and landing okay so for reserve let's say we're flying in the day that means we need 30 minutes or, or 0 0.5 hours. And if we use our 10 gallons per hour, we multiply that by 0 0.5 hours, we get five gallons of reserve fuel. All right? Now, for approach and landing, I like to use 20 minutes. Okay, so 20 minutes is the same as 0 0.33 hours. So 0 0.33 again times our 10 gallons per hour gets us 3.3 gallons. All right, and there you have it. We have calculated all of it. Now let's add it all up. All right, our approach and landing was 3.3 gallons. Our reserve was five gallons. Our cruise and descent was 1.8 plus 1.7 that's 3.5 plus 0.8 that's 4.3 plus 0.5 that's 4.8 so 4.8 our climb we had 1.7 plus 1.1 that's 2.8 plus 1.2 that's 4 so we had 4 gallons for climb and then taxi we used 1.2 from our POH 1.2 gallons. So now if we add this all up, we have 1.2 plus 4, that's 5.2, plus 4.8, that's 10, plus 5, that's 15, plus 3.3 is 18.3 gallons for our entire cross-country plan from our takeoff here through waypoint 6 and into our landing. So for a Cherokee Warrior, we can hold 48 pounds of or 48 gallons of usable fuel so that we'll have plenty with a full tank with a Cherokee Warrior we could even take less if we wanted to load the aircraft with more weight and get our weight balance squared away all right hope you guys enjoyed the video if you have any questions please comment below and if you look on your screen right now on the left side you're gonna see the video for how we calculated our time values on this cross-country chart so you can review how we did that. And on the right hand side, if you click there, you can go see all the videos in our cross country playlist and review any of those in the playlist. And then of course, if you tap our logo, click our logo on the top left, you can subscribe so that you can get a notification for the next time I post a video. All right, thanks guys.